guys, it's Erin. I wanted to create this video for you to go along with the tutorial that I wrote up last week about uh, adjusting or removing backgrounds in Photoshop Elements. So this is the photo that I used for my example. You can see that I had kind of a ho-hum background. This is the original. Um, kind of boring and blah and really distracting. Um, but I added a series of adjustment layers and textures and overlays to make it not quite so blah. And you can see that on those layers, I added some pretty detailed selection masks um, in order to apply those textures and adjustments just to the background, not my subjects. So I'm going to hop over here to the original photo and show you how I did that. So I'm going to use the auto select tool that is new to Photoshop Elements 2018. So you do need to have the latest and greatest version as of February 2018. Now you'll remember with Photoshop Elements that you have tools that hide under each other. So we're looking at the tool that's currently in the lower right hand corner of the select area. If it's not the auto selection tool, you will just click on the box and then click on the tool. So you can fine tune the way this tool works in a couple of important ways. First off is that you usually want to start off using add, which tells elements that whatever you select needs to be added to your selection. After you've made that initial selection, if you need to remove anything that element selected, then you'll go to the subtract mode. Now what this tool does is it takes a very rough selection from you and refines it. And the way you make that initial selection is using the rectangle tool, the elliptical tool, the lasso, or the polygonal lasso. Now the polygonal lasso draws line segments, so it's really good for man-made objects with corners. Um, I am going to, however, use this rectangle tool. And I am just going to click and drag a rough rectangle around my subject. And you can see that right away Photoshop Elements does a pretty good job of selecting most of my subject, although the edges aren't great. So that's where these add and subtract modes really come in. I am going to add on his shoe, and actually I am going to switch to the lasso mode right here. I'm going to draw around his shoe. I'm going to draw around her shoe and his shoe. And I see that the leaves are getting picked up. Those are gonna be hard to avoid because they match his shoe so well. But what I can add in is this top of the photo that's kind of getting cut off. I can add in her flouncy skirt right there. And then moving over to the subtract mode, I can take out a good bit of this greenery behind him. All right, so this is a pretty good initial selection. We're going to go over to the refine edge task space here and refine surprise surprise the edges of the work so I'm going to zoom in a little bit so we can really look at those edges you can see that they're kind of janky and they're hills and valleys and it just doesn't look great yet so the great thing about refine edge is that you can customize how you view your selection so a lot of people are used to working with the red overlay I really like working on white here because it shows me the most contrast between what I've selected and what is not selected. So after you cho choose your view mode, you want to make sure that show radius and show original are turned off. I'm going to turn on smart radius now. Smart Radius tells Elements, hey, I want you to look at the edge of the selection. And if I choose, let's say 10 pixels, I want you to look 10 pixels on either side of that edge and I want you to refine the selection within that 10 pixel space. So moving the radius up a bit, you can see that Elements is kind of filling in some of the edges. So the Smart Radius is a good start. Another thing I really love about Refine Edges is this smoothing slider. So it's going to take away those hills and valleys and, and kind of janky edges that we had before. 
you can see there were some really pokey areas up here that it removed quite well. Okay, so looking down here, it's important that you know about refined edges that you can't use, for instance, this erase tool to erase the leaves. These leaves are not part of the edge of my selection. They are part of the selection, right? As, as close as they are to the edge, they aren't on the edge. So this add to brush and this erase brush only work on the edges of your selection. So just to sum up, you make your initial selection with auto select. You come in to refine edges and refine as you need to. And then once you've got a nice smooth selection, if you want to do any additional work, go with maybe your quick selection brush where you can just kind of brush over in that add mode some of the areas that were missed. And you can try the subtract mode as well. So for a complicated selection like this, this technique where you're kind of making a selection, refining, cleaning up, refining again, it's a whole lot better than painting with the paintbrush. So I see these last two little edges of her skirt that I need to brush in, and I'm pretty happy with that. So zooming out. So now that I've got this selection, I've got two options. I can either copy it by going to the edit menu and then I could paste it into a, a brand new file or a file with a background already there. So that's one option and I would still continue to do some cleanup work uh, with a layer mask just to finish off those troublesome areas. Or going back, I could invert my selection by typing shift command or control I that selects everything else, so everything but my sub subjects. And then I could hit the delete button to delete that background. Now, undoing my delete, the last thing I wanna show you is how you can apply a selection to a layer mask, which is exactly what I did for these layers here. So I'm going to return to my selection, and let's say I just want to darken the background, which is the area that's currently selected. I'm going to add a levels adjustment layer and you can see that right away it applies because my background was selected, it's automatically applied to the layer mask and I can simply darken that background as much as I want to. So obviously you can make it look unnatural as I've done or you can darken it just a little bit so that it doesn't attract the eye quite so easily. So I hope this video about using the Elements Auto Select tool to remove or replace backgrounds in your photos has been helpful. If you have any questions at all, visit my blog, digitalphotographyformoms.com, and let me know. I'll do my best to help you. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day.